Hi everyone and welcome back to another healthy keto eating show, Bible reading and story time. Stay tuned. Great to be back in doing another healthy keto eating show with another new recipe for you. You would have seen the recipe on Thursday. I did the Thursday uh, slideshow as always. It's a um, chicken and bacon cauliflower stuffed pepper, but it's an Alfredo one. So I don't remember how I did the name. I think it was just chicken, cauliflower, bacon, and Al er, Alfredo. I'm sorry, Alfredo chicken, bacon, and cauliflower stuffed red pepper. Yum. I am super excited to eat this. Like I said, I always do the videos both in the same day. So um, the slideshow video that you would have got Thursday is actually the same day that I'm going to do the healthy keto eating show. So I haven't even gotten to taste this yet, but I'm excited. I just pre-record all of my videos and just works out. I can get two videos done in one day. It works out perfect. So yeah, I'm excited about this one. It looks delicious. Can't wait to eat it. And I'll tell you the other things I have with it since I do one meal a day. It's called OMAD. Um, I eat once every 24 hours, and so the meal is a little bit bigger because I gotta try to get all those calories in one meal. So ever since this pandemic hit, I've been wanting to be the most, you know, the healthiest I could be at, my most optimal health, and eating one meal a day is very, very healthy, hitting autophagy after 18 hours, so for six hours I'm hitting autophagy. And then once or twice, mostly just once a week, I'll break that fast a little bit more and do like warrior, like 20 hours, and I'll do like two meals, or I'll do like 16 hour where I'll do like two meals and a snack. Um, I usually do that once a week and then I go back the six days. Once in a while, I'll do it twice. Um, if we have something special going on, like uh, church, uh, this time we have um, for the 4th of July, which obviously is gonna be after the 4th, it'll be the 5th on Sunday. So we're doing a barbecue cookout. And so that day, obviously, we're going to be eating it earlier, so I will break the fast that day just because they're going to be making some good food there. Um, and there will be keto stuff there because it's mostly meats and stuff. I'm bringing a couple keto things with me. I'm making a, a cucumber salad, that one that I've done before, and stuff like that. So there'll be keto food there. Don't worry. Don't worry when you go to a party. There's always something you can eat that's keto. So don't ever forget that. Now, if you're new to my channel, right there is the red subscribe button right there. Subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you're notified of all of my new uploads. Uh, share around my channel, please, so it can grow and I can help people spiritually along with the ketogenic diet. And also shoot me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this recipe and the video and the story time that this, you know, going to come with it. So anyways, but I've been ketogenic. I will be uh, five years in November. I lost all of my weight in the first 15 months. That's right, you guys, 15 months. I lost over 150 plus pounds. Since then, I've lost more. I'm over 170 pounds lost now total, but I've been maintaining that weight out for over three years. So yeah, been a great way of life for me. I've always done fasting. In the beginning, I waited till I got good fat, adapted for about two months, and then I started intermittent fasting with 16 hours. That's how I always did. I ate two meals and a little snack, and then I'd go 16 hours without eating. That's how I always did it. But I did it with low fat, used my body fat, because there's three forms. I was taught professionally by a keto doctor. I haven't said this for a while, and I got newcomers, so I just want to go over it. Um, I have a keto doctor, two keto nutritionists, and um, my brother who teaches this as a job, and also um, all the studying I've done myself. So I was, I was taught professionally how to do this, and done a lot of studying on on when you consider a high fat diet. Well, if you have high fat on your body, that is your high fat. So you wanna go lower fat. It wasn't designed to be the same for everybody, either for gaining, maintaining, or losing. If you're you know, in the losing mode like I was, or you are right now currently, you wanna use your body fat mostly. You can't go all low fat, obviously. You know, you're gonna get some fat, it's ketogenic. But instead of doing what they call the 75% to 80% macro for fat, which is around 110 to 150, sometimes even 160 grams, you want to do more like 75 grams, 75 to like, ah, oh, like 75 to 90 grams. Okay. That's what you want to do. Depending on how big you are. If you are very obese, you could do around 90 to hundred grams and still lose weight. But as you're going down, you want to drop that, but don't go really below 75, 75 grams, you guys, instead of the 110 to 150, they talk about which I eat now in maintenance mode. 
That's what I need because I don't have a lot of fat in my body anymore, so I need an energy source. Because we eat very low carb, which is 20 carbs or less a day, we don't have an energy source anymore, so our fat is our energy source. Whether it come off of your body for the energy or you're eating it if you're skinny and you're eating it. So for weight loss, you're gonna lower the fat, eat low lean meats, you know, fat for, or uh, low fat cheeses, low fat sour cream, low fat mayonnaise, things like that. Um, if you're in maintenance mode like me, you're gonna eat higher fat, you're gonna do the 75 to 80% which is 110 to 150 grams a day. Um, if you're trying to gain, you're gonna do even more. You're gonna do like around 150 to 200 grams. My nephew did it to gain weight. So it wasn't designed for everybody to do exactly 75 to 80% for everybody. It wouldn't even make sense, you guys. If you were a person like I was when I started at 300 or 400 pounds, I started at 300. But at 400 pounds, 500 pounds, why would you ever consume that much fat when you had a lot of fat on your body to lose? And I lost it quickly, got it off in 15 months and been maintaining that for over three years now. I'm living life large and love the way I feel. I know a lot of you do not want to wait three, four, five, ten 10 years to get all your weight off. Let's get it off quick. Do it the right way. I was taught professionally. I am not a doctor nor a nutritionist, but I was taught by doctors and nutritionists that are keto experts. So that being said, I bring it to you, you know, with my expertise of what I've learned and I've had pure success. I was on over 20 medications for a heart condition that I developed 22 years ago. I was on uh, 20 meds for that, for cholesterol problems, for uh, triglyceride, triglyceride problems, for high blood pressure, for sugar level problems. I was pre-diabetic. Um, I had GERG, I had stomach problems. I had uh, PCOS, um, uh, HPV, I had um, uh, sinusitis, I had a lot of problems, you guys. I've cured everything, everything. I also had problems with like vertigo. I still deal with a little bit of vertigo, but definitely better since doing the ketogenic. I got off of all my meds, but two. I'm on two very low dose for the heart. My heart went from uh, like 25% up to almost 50. I sit here today now at almost 50. I've done many diets, lost substantial amount of weight, not as much as I did now, but a lot, and never could I get off my meds. When I started the keto within the first uh, five months, I went in in five months. I had, by that time, I had lost about 50 pounds. I was still in the 200s and I already was being taken off of all my heart meds. That actually was being happened in the first two to three months. I was being taken off of them in the like 280s, 260, right around there. Um, but when I had my first blood draw, everything came back perfect and I was off of all of these heart meds in the very beginning. So it has nothing to do, a lot of people will say, well, it's because you lost weight. No, every diet I ever did, I never got off my heart meds. I had that heart condition for 20, well, I started it when I was almost 40, so I was 16 years in with the heart condition. For 16 years, I tried three different diets, all different ones, the South Beach, Richard Simmons, uh, just a low carb diet, um, you know, just eating carbs, but not like this low, uh, and never once got off my heart meds. And I was in my 20s, you guys, in my 20s. I now sit in my 40s, I was almost 40 when I started this diet, and I got off all the meds immediately within just a few months, and then blood work, every time I go, and I've had it done nine times, it's just better and better every time, you guys. So it's the way we eat. We were designed to eat fat, not carbs. That's the thing, that's the problem. So you're gonna eat some carbs, uh, like this has some carbs, I'll go over that with you. Um, I did would have told you it in my slideshow, but if you didn't watch that, I'll tell you here. But anyways, you know, it's the way we eat, and ketogenic is the healthiest way. I truly believe that, or paleo, are really good ways of life to eat. Um, definitely no scientific, you know, scientific proof behind it, but it definitely would help with this virus we're dealing with because it, you know, the virus hits people with diabetes, sugar levels, breathing problems, all of that. You cure all that. That's another thing I cured. I had asthma, you guys. I cured my asthma. I had inhalers that I took all the time. Haven't been taking them in four years. Knock on wood, but I haven't. So that being said, I was on. Uh, not only that, but steroids, everything, you guys. Nebulizer machines, it's gone. It is gone. I'm living life large. And like I said, I've lost weight before and never got off of any of that. Ketogenic is the way to go, you guys, the way to go. If you need extra help, I link my email down below. I would love to help you, set you up on a macro plan. I've helped over 2,000 people get their life back and lose weight, and I'd like to help you too. So for free, I will help you. Link down below is my email. Send me an email because i got to ask you some questions to get you set up on a macro plan. I need to know some information. In fact, I'm helping my good friend Karen starting on Monday. And I know, Karen, you watch these videos. I'm so proud of you, girl. God bless you. You're on the right path. She just found out she's uh, pre-diabetic. So we're going to get this weight off of her and get her healthy. Girl, you're going to get healthy and you're going to do it quickly. Following me, you're going to do it quickly. She's my neighbor, so I can help her daily. So... Just like I did with Monica. Monica did live right next to me, but she texts me every day, and I told her, I'm here every day if you need help. So Karen, I'm here, I'm gonna help you. We're gonna get this weight off. And I'll show you guys 
like after she gets her weight off, if she lets me share the before and after, I'll show you how quick I can do this with her. So, but anyways, let's get on to our food. We're going to read our prayers and promises first, and then we'll go over the meal. Um, today we are reading on, let's see here. Why did I go that far ahead? Okay, we are reading on loss. Did we read loneliness already? Because I do my videos, like, all pre-recorded, I make them so they fit that day, you know, for um, the way they go in order. Let's see. All right. I think I've already read loss as well. And we didn't. That one. I thought I did loss. Okay, maybe I didn't read this one. So it's on loss, you guys. And this one starts with Psalms 126.5. Those who sow in tears shall reap the shouts of joy. And that's true. You know, God even wants to see your tears, and he wants to help you even in time of sorrow. Um, the next one is Psalms 119.76. Let your steadfast love become my comfort according to your promise to your servant. Amen to that. The next one, Isaiah 40, 44. So 404. I hope I didn't read this one. For some reason, I'm thinking I did. Maybe I didn't. Okay, if I did already, sorry, guys, you're getting a double. Uh, uh, it's Isaiah 404. Every, so 40, number four. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. Made Sorry guys, got a call, so I turned it on airplane mode. I completely forgot to hit the airplane mode. So we'll just read that one over. And it was um, second Thet Thethel now I can't even talk. Second Thet Thess Thessalonians. Thessalonians. I know how to say that. Second Thessalonians 316. Um May the Lord Himself, the Lord of peace, pour oh no, 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 no. I'm reading the wrong one. Oh, I just hate when people call in when you're trying to do a video and you forget to turn on airplane mode. Sorry, we are on Isaiah 40, number four. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level and rugged places a plain. I like that. So every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. It's just the power of God, you guys, the power of God. Uh, Psalms 40, uh, 46, 2 through 4. The earth may fall apart. The mountains may fall into the middle of the sea. But we will not be afraid. The waters of the sea may roar and foam. The mountains may shake when the waters rise. But we will not be afraid. God's blessings are like a river. They fill the city of God with joy. And that's so true. We don't have to worry or fear or anything when we have God. We will have loss. We will have things that will happen in our life, but turn to God. He will help you get through each and every situation you go through. I always say if he brings you to it, he's going to get you through it. The other side says, God, in my life I have endured times of immense loss, and we all have. I lost my dad uh, 19 years ago, you know, and it's, it was hard. I've lost other people in my life, family members. It's been very hard. But that is not where my story ends. You do not leave me in the valley. I will rise again and leaning on you, make my way up to the mountaintop. It's steep and I stumble at times, but I know I cannot sit in the empty feeling of loss forever. There is too much that you want to give me for, for me to fixate on what has been taken. You are my wor worthy, you are my worth, and the one who fills my empty cup. Now, like I said, I feel like I've read this one before, and maybe it was a video that you're going to get uh, later. I hope I didn't. I really hope I didn't. But if I did, hey, you got it twice. But that being said, like you want to rise to the top of that mountain. You do. You want to get to the top and you will. God will get you back up to the top of that mountain. You may fall down that mountain, but he's going to get you right back up to the top. He's, you know, he's going to help you in loss and pain. Turn to him. Ask him for the help and he will. The bottom says, do you ask God for help when you need his comfort? And ab absolutely, I go to God all the time. All the time I'm going to him to comfort me when I need his comfort. And like I said, I really feel like I've read this one. <laughs> so... But that being said, that's okay. We'll just have it twice. <laughs> Maybe God needed somebody to hear it, somebody new that was in my channel. 
So that being said, you guys definitely turn to God, love God, turn to him, and he will help you. So like I always say, start your day, go through your day, end your day with life's manual right here. Can't get any better than that. There's manuals for everything in the world, but you want to know life's manual? Right here. Turn to God. Read scripture. Study. Spend time alone. Write, you know, write scriptures down. You know, do some analogies on things. Understand how the Bible works, how things work. And turn to him for everything. Pray. Pray for everybody. Start your day with God. Start praying. Ask him to cleanse you clean before you pray. And then pray. Put on the armor of God. Start your day. Just keep God with you all the time, guys, and you'll feel amazing. I have never felt so good in my life because of all the reading I've done. I finished my 30-day challenge. I'm starting over in the Bible, reading it again, but I'm starting now in the Old Testament, going all the way through. I want to just read it. I just want God to fill me with overjoyness and just all his teachings right here in Life's Manual, the Bible. So that being said, I hope all of you are doing well, staying safe, happy, and healthy, and trusting God, and God will get us through this. 2020 hasn't been the best year ever, but you know what? I look at it as it has, because I wake up every day, the sun's shining, God has given me a day, you know, given me another day, and I feel amazing, and I'm just happy to be alive. He's kept me safe from this virus, and he's just absolutely wonderful, and no matter what happens, it's his plan. That's how he wants it. So, I hope all of you guys are doing the same. And I could go on and on and on with God. I just can't stop. Like I said, I hope I didn't read that again, but sometimes people need it again. Maybe you guys already heard it, and that's okay. I get mixed up a little bit because of the way I do my videos. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope I didn't already read it, but even if I did, that's okay. Because you can read the Bible over 100 times and read scriptures over 100 times. So, that is Bible scriptures. Maybe somebody needed to hear it. So, all right. Let's go on to my meal here. I made my stuffed peppers uh, with the Alfredo sauce. It's got ground chicken in it. It's got cauliflower rice in it. It's got bacon bits in it. And then um, salt, pepper, onion and garlic powder, cayenne pepper, and uh, crushed red pepper. It's got hot sauce on it, Parmesan cheese. Yum. I'm excited. I have two peppers here. The serving size was for four peppers, but I only had two peppers. So in the video, I explained that the, two, the four peppers aren't there, but the mixture is for four peppers. It would be 19 carbs. That means I have eight carbs just alone in my dinner here. So just be careful if you're doing more than, let me pull this back a little bit more. If you're doing um, uh, more than one meal a day like I am, then of course, just split this in half. Just do one pepper and eat the one later because this is eight carbs alone right here. And I try to recommend that everybody does six or less in one sitting if you're doing more than one meal. And then I have two hard boiled eggs here. I got a little bit of the mixture on it, but two hard boiled eggs that I put a little bit of mayonnaise on. I've got a serving of cucumbers with a serving of ranch dressing to give me more fat. And I do have the mayonnaise on the eggs too. Eggs are high in fat. Um, the Alfredo sauce would have been high in fat. The eggs are high in fat. Uh, the ranch would be higher in fat. Then I've got a two good yogurt here with a serving of pecans, which would give me a nice good fat there. Two uh, keto fat bombs. You can't see them on here, but two keto fat bombs. Let me pull it back more. There. Now I'm going to put a little bit of whipped cream on it. I got a cup of coffee with sugar free creamer and a water. So I have got a total of 19 carbs here. I have 19 carbs total, but I'm doing it in one meal, so that's okay. Kept it under 20 again. So. Let's go ahead and try a bite of this. Now, I did show you a picture of it firsthand um, when they were before they were broke open so you guys could see it. And then I went and cut it open because I wanted to put my cucumbers and eggs and everything on the plate. So, that being said, I'll stand up and show you a bite here. How beautiful it looks. Ah, look at that delicious yum. Like my new shirt. Isn't this cute? My husband found it. Um, well, brought me to, found a grad cell. Took me to a grad cell, whatever, and I found it at a grad cell. And it can be, oh. Ouch, I slipped. <laughs> the floor's slippery. Well, my feet are slippery because I take some good care of my feet. They're so soft. But anyways, you can wear it up like that or down. I like it down. I think it was designed to wear down. I'm not sure, but I like it down. And so you see it there. I'll just stand up here and show you guys again. So you can see the arms on it. Aren't the arms cute? And it's baggy and flowy. It's just a size. Actually, this is an extra small, you guys. An extra small. And if I can show you the tag, I will. But anyways, look at this. Look at how baggy this is on me, and it's an extra small. And let's see if I can show you. <laughs> Pull up my pants a little bit there. They were kind of coming down. Let's see here. I want to show you guys this. Let's see if I can get up close enough for you guys to see this, and we'll have to turn this light, because otherwise you won't see it. Hopefully you can see it there. See, it says extra small. I hope you can see it. I hope it's not blurry. Don't mean to be so close to the camera. But yeah, this is an extra small, you guys. So some things I buy in an extra small just shows that I have kept my weight off and that I, you know, 
can even wear some things in extra small and you see it's baggy on me. I can't believe that. Hopefully you got to see that take. And sorry that I bumped this table and got so close to the camera there, you guys, but I just wanted you guys to see it. I'm sure all of you guys believe me, but I just want to be truthful. I want this whole thing in here so you guys can see it. Just want to be truthful so you guys know that I'm not lying. <laughs> but anyways, I got it at a garage, so I paid like two bucks for it. So let's try this. Mmm. Yum. I like red peppers because they're a little bit sweeter, where green pepper is um, a little bit, uh, you know, more um, blah tasting. But I like the red ones. I'm sorry if you hear anything outside. They're uh, mowing and blowing the grass and stuff there. I got my air on, so hopefully you can hear me. It's hot out, very hot here. It was humid. Yesterday it was so humid. It was like 90 some degrees and the humidity was like 80%. It was super hot. Mmm. But I love the red peppers. And then I decided to do the cayenne and the crushed red pepper hot sauce because I like things hot. I explained in my um, uh, recipe video on this, the recipe on this in Thursday's video, I explained that you can exclude the hotness. If you don't like it hot, you don't have to do the cayenne or the crushed red pepper or the hot sauce. Mmm. Wow, this is delicious, you guys. So yummy. So how's everybody doing? I know I already asked that. I just was saying I hope you guys are healthy and safe and happy. Hope you guys have returned back to your churches. Gosh, I thought I cut this. Maybe not. Mm. I actually don't even need the knife. The pepper is nice and soft, so it's pretty easy to cut it. Yum, this is so good, you guys, so good. I don't know how I keep coming up with recipes because, and I mean, all keto, I've got over 200 recipes. If you go into my playlist, you'll see I've got over 200 recipes and I just keep doing it. I keep finding more ideas. I'm sure one day I'm going to get to a, Sorry, I had like mayonnaise on the side dipped in there. Get to a point where I won't be able to think of anything, but maybe they'll come out with new things. So let's hope. <laughs> but I'm sure you guys understand that I can only do so many recipes before, you know, there's no way of really doing more. Mm. Let's try a cucumber here. My husband brought these home to me from uh, Jimmy John's. They're very thinly sliced. I'm gonna show you up close. Look at how thin that is, really thin. So I keep the peeling on it. Normally I take the peeling off, but um, not when they're this thin. So he brought me some cucumbers home from there and that's what I'm having. With ranch dressing, just a serving. And then hard boiled eggs, like I said, with the mayonnaise on top to give me extra fat. Mmm. Yum, yum, yum. Let's have a drink of our tea. I may have said coffee to you. If I did in the beginning, I meant I'm having Earl Grey tea decaffeinated with sugar free creamer, hazelnut, or vanilla caramel, that's what I'm having, and um, stevia. I know the, the sugar-free creamer already has a sweetener in it, but um, I do the little bit of stevia too, because it's not as sweet and I like it a little sweeter. So I do the liquid stevia in it, a couple squirts of that, or one squirt of it. Um, but anyways, sorry guys, allergies. Um, and my nose is running because I'm eating hot. Uh, but anyways, um, remember to always do the powdered creamer though. Don't do the liquid. The liquid has got that... Um, maltodextrin in it. I think it's called maltodextrin. Maltodextrin, I mean. It's got the maltodextrin in it, which is worse than sugar. So don't get the liquid form when you want the powder form of the uh, sugar-free creamer. Oh, that's good. I'm going to open this water up, too, because I want a little bit of water. Just doing water and coffee this time. Or tea. So, but anyways... Um, let's see, we're gonna tell a story. And I really hope, again, it's I'm getting to a point where I'm having a hard time even remembering stories I've told. 
And I don't want to do repeats. So. Um, but we'll just, I'm going to tell this story and hopefully I haven't already told it. It's about my first crush. I was in seventh grade. Um, I was always going to new schools. My family was always moving. We moved so much. So I never got, I mean, I made friends and everything, but I was always the new girl and I was always considered the nerd and everything, believe it or not, as fashionable as I am now. Back then, my family didn't have a lot of money. Um, you know, I couldn't dress in the best clothes and everything. You know how kids are, how cruel they can be. So I had friends and everything, but you know, a lot of the popular girls always made fun of me and everything and cut me down and all that. And, you know, I guess that's just part of life. But, yeah, I got made fun of because my, my family were poor and we didn't have a lot growing up. Um, but that's okay. We had God. So it's not about the clothing and all that. That's not what it's about. A lot of the stuff I get is from Goodwills even to this day. Uh, but, yeah, I, I would get made fun of a lot and stuff because, we, you know, I was a new girl. Um. Didn't have all the, <laughs> ooh, that was hot. Didn't have the up-to-date in-style clothing. My, my parents couldn't afford it. If my mom found something at a grad school, I would have that, but other than that, we just dressed whatever mom could afford. So, anyways, there was a guy that I had a crush on. It was one of the popular boys. I knew I'd never have a chance with him because he was a popular guy, but I had a crush on him, that's okay. Never told him I had a crush on him, but I did. I really liked him. I think he kind of knew because I looked at him all the time, smiled. But anyways, school was, you know, coming to the end. And they were having a seventh grade dance, kind of like a, you know, well, it wasn't a prom. It was just a dance. But to me, it was like going to prom. Like, you know, it was just amazing. And I really wanted to wear this beautiful gown I had. It was green and sparkly. It reminded me of the Emerald City, the sparkle in it. And I loved it. It was more of a prom type dress. And I didn't know, even my mom's like, you gotta really dress up pretty. She was thinking it was prom too. I didn't know. I was new to all of this. It was my first dance and I thought it was like a prom. I thought it was a, a prom type. Not prom, prom like, you know, your senior year, but I just thought it was like a prom. So I didn't know how anybody was gonna dress didn't know people just wore jeans and shirts maybe a skirt but not like I dressed up not a prom dress <laughs> but anyways my mom was like so excited and I got all dressed up and felt like a princess in this dress and I felt so pretty and I was so excited and I couldn't wait for this boy to see me in this beautiful dress and I wasn't heavy then. I wasn't a heavy child. Maybe a little bit chunky, but I wasn't heavy. Um, but anyways, I uh, got all fixed up, and my dad brought me up to the school. Um, normally, I just walk because it was not that far, but dad brought me because I was wearing high heels. So dad brought me to him. Even then, I was fashionable. I told you, even since I was a little kid, I was always into fashion. So I was so excited. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I get to dress up for this prom. I kept calling it a prom. It wasn't a prom, it was a dance. <laughs> End of the year, getting ready for school to get out, it was a dance. So, my dad drops me off, I go in and everybody, right as I'm walking in the door, is just staring at me, really funny, and I'm looking at everybody going, oh my gosh, why are some people wearing jeans? And I didn't see everybody, I was just a couple people outside, and I'm thinking, um, oh, maybe they're, you know, they're, maybe they set everything up. Maybe they're heading home to get dressed now. I meet up with my friend. I think me and her coincide with each other. We said we were going to wear these pretty dresses. So she was all dressed up too. I get there. I'm looking around for her. And I'm looking at everybody. Everybody is in jeans and t-shirts. Or a jean skirt. Um, 
Boy, I felt out of place. Very out of place. I was so embarrassed. But my friend was all dressed up. So at least I had somebody that was dressed up with me. <laughs> so I wasn't the only one. But anyways, we're getting ready. I mean, you know, in the dance hall part or whatever, they're playing music, everybody's dancing. We're sitting up. We don't have any guys with us or anything. But I kept checking out the guy I liked, the one I had a crush on. I think his name was Mike. Yeah, it was Mike. And I just, oh, I was just so in love with this guy. So in love that I had the biggest crush on him. And he kept staring at me. And my friend kept saying, he is staring at you. I'm like, no way. She's like, he is. And then a couple times I would look and then look away real quick and see that he was looking at me. And he was smiling, too. He was looking and smiling at me. So you can imagine I felt like the princess that night. But the guy I really like is smiling at me. Um, you know, kept looking at me, kept smiling. I'm thinking, ooh, he, he thinks I look good. Or I would have thought, maybe he thought I looked pretty. So, whoops. I had a little bit of bacon on that. A bacon bit dropped. <laughs> so, um, we're getting ready to... I think us girls went outside, me and my friends. Went outside just to get some air because it was hot. And I was in this gown. So I went outside to get some fresh air. Came back in. And they were getting ready to do the uh, couples dance. Where couples would dance. And he's staring at me. He's whispering. He's, you know, to some of his friends and stuff. I'm like, oh my God, what is he saying about me? Because they kept all looking at me, so I knew it was about me. And I was getting nervous. Because I thought, oh my God, what's going on? Why is he talking about me? Is he talking about me? What is this? And so, as I'm sitting there, all of a sudden he starts walking towards me. My friend said, oh my God, here he comes, here he comes. Oh my God, he's probably going to ask you to dance. He's probably going to ask you to dance. I'm like, no, he would never do that. He, he wouldn't want to dance with me. And she goes, well, it's couples dancing. He's coming up to you and he's been smiling at you all night. He comes up to me and sure enough, asked me to dance. And I know all of you right now are probably smiling thinking, oh, the guy she had a crush on asked her to dance. The popular boy asked her to dance. Yeah, that's not what happened. Nope. It was all a big game, big joke on me, a big gag. He was dared by his friends to come up and ask me because he said, you know that girl likes you. She always stares at you, everything you know she likes you. It's couples dance right now. She's wearing that ridiculous prom dress. Go up and ask her to dance and then say, just kidding. So when he came up to me, he asked me to dance. I said, yeah, I, you know, just innocent little me. I was very shy in school. Not anything like I am now. Nothing like I am now. Absolutely nothing like I am now. I was two different people. If you would have seen me back then to now, you would say you're not even the same person. I gained confidence as I grew up and got more confident with God. You know, go boldly to the throne. So I got more bold as I got older. And we do, you know, as we get older. We don't care what people think. So, um, but yeah, I was very shy. I didn't really talk or anything, but when he asked me, I'm just like, yeah. So I got up to go out to the floor with him. He got me out to the floor. So it was even worse. Got me out to the floor and like put his hands out like he was gonna dance with me. And then did like one of these, like psych and cracked up laughing and said like, I would ever dance with you. First off, this dress is ridiculous you're wearing. You're a nerd, you're ugly, you're gross. Get away from me. Everybody in his group laughed so hard. I started crying instantly right there. And they go, God, she's crying even. I was crying. I was so heartbroken. Well, first I was in shock, but I started crying because he was like, like, I would ever dance with you. Look at you. You're a nerd. And you're wearing a prom dress at a dance? What's wrong with you? 
I never was so humili humiliated in my whole life. I ran up to my friends. She saw what happened. She went up and said something, yelled at them. I ran out the door. I ran all the way home barefoot. I took the heels off. I ran home barefoot, bawling. I ran in my bedroom. I was crying. My mom's like, what's wrong? I'm like, nothing. I didn't even want to talk. I don't want to talk right now. Then I told her what happened later on. But I was so heartbroken that this guy said this to me. He called me a nerd. Nobody in the school likes you. You dress like a, an old lady. You don't have, you know, you dress in grad cell clothes, um, you know, used clothes. They're not even popular. You're just, no guy in the world would like you. Um, I was so, so sad. I didn't even want to ever go back to school again because I knew I'd have to face this again. All these girls laughing at me and everything. I'd have to face all these people. So the next day, I think this was a Friday night, so I knew I didn't have to be back to school till Monday. But Monday morning came and it came fast. <laughs> I, mean, I did not want to go to school. I told my mom I wasn't feeling good. She's like, you're fine. You're not sick. You're just scared. Just go back to school. Don't worry about what he said. People are going to be mean. That's just part of life. You got to, you know, that's what makes you stronger. So don't let it bother you. Hold your head up high. Go back to school. So I went to school and, of course, walked in and they're all still laughing at me, talking about my prom dress and all of that and, you know, how ugly I looked and all that and I just was so humiliated, you know, it was just so sad how mean and cruel people can be, you know. I'd like to bump into him right now and find out what he looks like right now. Maybe, maybe he got karma that came down on him. Um, although I wouldn't want anything bad to have happened to him. I wouldn't want any, he was just a kid then. He probably would look at me now and say, I'm so sorry for what I ever said to you. But back then he was dared by all the popular girls to do this to me. So, but yeah, I was very sad. Um, they kept picking on me for weeks and weeks. Every day I went to school, they kept picking on me. And eventually it just kind of went away. We moved again. And I think I started another school in seventh grade. So I had gotten out of there. We moved again. My dad was a radio disc jockey, so we were moving a lot. And we weren't real rich. He didn't make a lot of money at that job. We weren't real, you know, real rich. Sorry, guys. I had to blow my nose allergies and when I eat something hot like that it opens up those sinuses for me <laughs> mm. oh that coffee's good but yeah so I did eventually get out of that school that's done and I didn't have to deal with that again but isn't that sad how terrible you know kids can be how cruel they can be I'm just glad that kind of that stopped in this century for kids, like you could wear anything and you're popular. Girls just wear like leggings and t-shirts. So there's my dollop of whipped cream. It's, it's two tablespoons is what it is. I know it seems like when it comes out, it's a lot more than two tablespoons, but it's not. It's two tablespoons because it's so light and airy, you know. But anyways, so yeah, that's my story of my crush. My first crush on a guy, and my heart was crushed after that. It's sad when you, you know, meet somebody and you really like them and you have a crush on them, and that's what they do to you, you know? That's exactly what happened. I had a major crush on him, and he crushed my heart. Crushed it. Some of my yogurts have sayings, some don't. Like I said, I'm so sad that they're taking the sayings up. This is the blueberry one. Mm, I love it. And it's got the pecans. And the pecans are really crushed up. They're really tiny. They're like the size. I think I just spit. <laughs> They're like the size smaller than a pea. They're smaller than a pea. And I like that because it mixes through better. They're all crushed up. I love it. And it's only one carb for a fourth cup. And I don't even have that much on there. I never put that much on it. It seems like a lot to me. But 
You can do a whole fourth cup of the pecans. They're one carb because it's three carbs, two fiber. So it's a net carb. So it'd be one net carb. Mmm. So yummy. But that's my story of my first crush that crushed my heart. And I hope I didn't already tell you guys that story. But I did look pretty, you know. Now I understand dances to that. I mean, some people will go in jeans, some people go in a dress, but not a prom dress. <laughs> but you can nowadays, because some people do dress up more and some dress down for dances. It's just back then, nobody did. And I kept using the word, it's like a prom, I think. So my mom wanted me to dress up, <laughs> so did I. I love dressing up. I'm a very girly girl. Very, very girly girl. So, but isn't that sad, you guys, how mean people can be? That's okay, though. I'm sure that guy is not the same now in life. He was just a kid. Seventh grade. What are you in seventh grade? Like 11, 12? Maybe 13? No, I think you are only like, yeah, maybe about 12 or 13. So, just depending on when you started school. Some start kindergarten at five, some start at six, depending on, you know, the way your birthday falls. I think I was 13. But yeah, my first crush, and oh, man, he devastated me. I'm just glad that we moved after a while. Eventually, it did settle down. They stopped making fun of me. I think a teacher got mad at them and said to stop what they're doing. I think my mom called the school and said that, you know, it's got to stop something like that. I don't know. It eventually stopped, but then we then we moved. Now I'm going to have one of my mint bombs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I love these so much. They're my favorite out of all the keto bombs is the mint ones. They taste... I used to say like a Girl Scout cookie. Well, if you're hard in the freezer, you freeze them, then it tastes like a Girl Scout cookie. But if not, I know what it tastes like now because my brother said it tastes like an Andy's mint. If you remember those mints that we used to get like at uh, Italian. If it isn't one thing, it's another. I turned on the airplane mode, but I forgot I had my alarm set to take my vitamin at 6 o'clock, and those go off no matter what. I am sorry, guys, that this video screwed up twice. Um, but anyways, yeah, I was just saying that it's like an Andy's mint. That's what people are saying. Kind of like the mints you get at uh, the expensive mints they put in, you know, like our Italian restaurants and stuff. But they're really good. I love the mints. They're my favorite. So, oh, I was looking at the time like it's 39 seconds. Wow, that was a quick video. <laughs> so I just came back in. I think I'm around 30 minutes old, but I'm going to get off here. I like the other mint bomb off. Mm. I'm not a huge mint lover. I don't like mint stuff. But I do when they're a soft mint like that. Like the Girl Scout cookies, which I don't need anymore. Or like the Andy mints, which I don't need anymore. That type of mint. I don't like like New York patties and stuff. I don't like real strong mint. So, but these are really a light mint. I love them. So, that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this healthy keto eating show. The Bible stuff I read, hopefully I didn't already read it to you guys, or hopefully you're not going to get it again in another video, because I pre-record all these videos, so maybe I already said it in a video, and you're going to get it. But if you did, maybe you needed it twice. So, But I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you enjoyed my story time, my crush, and I got totally crushed. <laughs> but anyways... Life goes on, made me stronger. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? So, again, I hope all of you are doing well. Stay happy, safe, and healthy. Lean on Jesus. Seek him out. Pray to him. You know, just make your whole life about God. Make your whole life about God, and your life will be absolutely wonderful. I will continue to pray for all of you for that hedge of protection. Please keep me in your prayers as well. I pray for each and every one of you. If I know you by name, if I don't, I just... Then say for my entire channel, everybody on my channel, I will continue to do that. 
And if you could continue to pray for me, I would appreciate it. Everybody take care. God bless. And I'll see each and every one of you in my very next upload. Love you guys and God bless.